Today on Studio One, we'll visit a man who has plenty of time on his hands. He fixes all sorts of clocks. Also, canine police units are useful whenever a sensitive nose is needed. We'll watch as police dogs sniff for drugs. And the high price of gas has many concerned about the country's dependence on foreign oil. We'll tell you how government leaders are working toward an answer. From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Hello everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Monty Cashel. And I'm Kaylee Hamilton. Well, many people have heard of Mars. It's the red planet. It's true. And uh, NASA has been focusing on, on Mars for a while now. They sent a robot up there to capture images. And we here in North Dakota uh, received a grant to build a spacesuit for Mars. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're going to talk to the people who are involved with making that happen uh, later on in the show. That should be very interesting. Very interesting. Also on our show, oftentimes school budget cuts can mean a loss of support for music. We'll tell you why many educators feel music plays a vital role in a student's education. Also, many people dream of traveling to another country. Later, we'll meet a woman that traveled to Indonesia and ended up changing the future of an entire species. But first, here's today's news with Megan Floggin. Thanks, Monty and Kaylee. Nearly two weeks after doctors removed her feeding tube, Terry Schiavo died Thursday morning. Michael Schiavo, Terry's husband, was with her at the time of her death. But as her guardian, Michael Schiavo did not allow Terry's parents to be with her when she passed away. Supporters of Terry's parents say he was cruel to the end. The long and heated family dispute over reinserting Schiavo's feeding tube has given rise to legal, judicial, and religious debate. Her death sparked reaction around the country. I urge all those who honor Terry Schiavo to continue to work to build a culture of life where all Americans are welcomed and valued and protected. After her death, protesters sang hymns, prayed and cried outside the hospice where Terry died. Many demonstrators have been at the hospice for weeks in an effort to save Terry's life. Alarms that cry wolf may be costing communities. In the past 20 years, the number of false alarm calls to fire departments has doubled. Fees for multiple false calls may be imposed depending on local laws. According to a recent study by the National Fire Protection Association, one in every 10 calls to the fire department is false. Some false alarms are pranks, but most are because of malfunctions in commercial alarm systems. Dust, wind, and oversensitive systems may set off alarms. Someone who was smoking in the area with a smoke detector, and the smoke detector went out. Well, it's, some would consider it to be a false alarm because there's no fire, but actually that detector functioned in exactly the manner in which it was supposed to. The increase in false alarms is also due to more people and businesses with fire or smoke detection systems. New technology is helping law officers find missing children. It is called Amberview and is currently being tested in West Virginia. Amberview was created shortly after the Amber Alert system began. Amberview captures a computerized image of a child's face from every angle. These images can be viewed three-dimensionally and will be stored in a database. During an Amber Alert, the pictures are transmitted to patrol cars via the internet. Creators of Amberview hope this new technology will help find missing children alive and well. With gas prices on the rise, many are left to wonder how much more they will be paying at the pump. It's also causing some government leaders to take a look at other forms of fuel to help reduce energy costs. To the nation's dismay, prices for gas and oil in the U.S. have been steadily rising over the past few years. To combat this problem, the Senate recently voted to begin exploratory drilling in Alaska's wildlife refuge Anwar. But many feel that other forms of energy can be found within the U.S. without drilling for oil in the refuge. That was the subject of an alternative energy summit recently held here at the Energy and Environmental Research Center in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We're in a terrible position in terms of our nation's energy picture. More and more demand for imported oil and the places that oil is coming from look increasingly politically uncertain. The summit focused on the importance of reducing the dependence on foreign oil supplies. We are today twice as dependent on foreign sources of oil as we were in the early 1970s. Hydrogen power and biodiesel were among the most popular alternatives at the summit. Biodiesel is a clean burning alternative fuel that is derived from canola plants. 
Many gas stations and automobile manufacturers are looking to make biodiesel a cheap and environmentally friendly alternative. They provide based on whether the uh, customers want it or not, and a lot of that is dependent upon the legislative drivers in the individual states. Many are hoping that with new developments comes less dependence and more sources for alternative energy. I'm Carrie Versdahl reporting for Studio One News. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, each state has a tax incentive plan to encourage the use of alternative fuels and energy sources. And that's the news for now. Monty and Kaylee? Thanks, Megan. Well, I think it's safe to say in our area at least spring is here. It's true. It's the snow is starting to melt. Mm -hmm. I've seen some grass, actually. Yes, it's really nice to see that <laughs> kind of weather. Let's go over to Aaron Swanson at the Weather Studio, and he'll tell us if this wet warming trend is going to continue. Well, thanks, Monty and Keely. Yeah, we will start to see uh, even some people getting out and mowing the yards and doing some yard work. So it sounds kind of fun, actually, to get outside and enjoy that. Uh, but first off, we have to spring ahead. Uh, that's the time of year. Every year it comes around, so it kind of sneaks up on us. Uh, on April 3rd at 2 a.m., the clocks go ahead an hour. So. Uh, well, the main reasons though for this is it saves energy and it also prevents crime and even traffic accidents just simply by it staying later or lighter, excuse me, just a little bit later. So that extra hour does make a difference and they've done a lot of studies uh, to prove this as well. So uh, as we take a look though across to much of North Dakota, right around the mid uh, to lower 40s, I guess, including Grand Forks. Otherwise in Bismarck, you're into the 50 degree range. Uh, your overnight lows are though in the mid-20s as well. But you can notice that the sunset and sunrise times are getting a little bit later, like Fargo, right around 8 o'clock is when the sun will be setting. So with an hour uh, jumping ahead, you get a little later sun sunsets. So uh, Denver, though, right around 58 degrees, 59 in Portland, 52 in towards Minneapolis, and 4 degrees Celsius in Winnipeg. As we take a look at our jet stream here, we have some ridges and troughs that are kind of set up. Uh, we have two ridges, one off the west coast and one off the east coast. And then we have a trough kind of in the middle that's cooling the air in the middle. Uh, we've seen some warmer conditions out towards the west and also in towards the eastern region. And with those warmer conditions, uh, it typically that, well, excuse me, with that jet stream actually start to see it shift across. And that's actually going to bring us those warmer conditions in towards the midwest, uh, towards mid-April actually. So uh, just kind of it's that typical spring pattern where you get a lot of ups and downs or waves actually within the jet stream. And you get to bring in some warm weather for a week or so and then some cooler weather for a week or so. Uh, as we take a look at where we're wet or dry though, we're going to be wet out towards the northeast, dry in towards the middle of the country, and continued wet actually in towards the northwest where they really need it. As we take a look at Seattle, Washington, uh, over a nine week period between the January 19th and March 25th, they saw about two and a half inches of rain. As we take a look, just between four days in March, on March 26th to the 29th, they saw almost, uh, actually more than that, in through that region so but the drought still continues into the Pacific Northwest and uh, but otherwise in towards Montana and Idaho it's where it's still very very severe so as we take a look at our studio on weather IQ question what is the sunniest uh, city in the United States and you have a few choices there to choose from so we'll have the answer to that question and also a look at uh, cell phones and weather and how they're all tied together coming up in the second half. Thanks Aaron. I don't know which is the sunniest state. They all look like they would be pretty sunny. I'm surprised that Grand Forks, North Dakota wasn't in that list. Yeah, but we keep swapping between sunny and cloudy days, so. <laughs> all right, we'll find out later in the show. Coming up now, here's some sports news with Greg Anchors. Thanks, Monty and Kaylee. Certainly the sun is on everyone's mind this time of year, and it's the Phoenix Suns who entered Wednesday's play with a solid one game lead over the San Antonio Spurs in the West. Looking to maintain their lead, the Suns could clinch the Pacific Division for the first time in 10 years with a win over Philadelphia. And with all that in mind, the Suns came into this one a little bit jacked up. In the third, Sean Marion accepts the feed and delivers the facial, putting the Suns up by 22 points. Later in the third, Steve Nash dribbles himself into trouble but finds Stephen Hunter wide open the lane for the dunk as the Suns cruise 116 to 87. The Spurs looking to keep up with the Suns and remain just one game back with a win over the Seattle Sonics. They would deliver in this one winning 89 to 76 led by 28 points by Tony Parker. World Cup qualifying action between U.S. and Guatemala in the 11th minute. Eddie Johnson laces one by the goaltender for Guatemala Richard Trigueno giving the U.S. a 1-0 lead early on. But Trigueno would get his revenge on Johnson in the 67th minute from point blank range. The bicycle kick denied by Trigueno, preserving the one goal difference as the Guatemalans clear. But just one minute later, the U.S. would be on the attack again. Mark Ralston comes charging in, and he is not going to miss from that range. The U.S. goes on to win 2-0 and are now 1-1 one one in World Cup qualifying action. Not everybody who dreams of a career in professional sports will make it. 
but the health and social benefit for the children who play sports is tremendous. It is estimated that more than 22 million children are involved in organized sports. Recently, top players from Division II basketball teams held a clinic to teach kids the fundamentals of the game. They stressed how participating in sports promotes good exercise habits. They say children who take part can also learn valuable life lessons. It's just, you know, just an opportunity to interact with other kids. You know, um, you know, so many kids from different towns, from different backgrounds. You know, uh, a, a simple game like basketball could bring kids together and, and uh, just give them, uh, you know, the tools to start to um, learn something at a young age. Some tools the players taught the kids were shooting, dribbling, passing, and footwork. And now it's time for the Studio One Sports Trivia question. Besides the Yankees, because let's face it, they're involved in way too many baseball records as is, what other team has had five consecutive seasons with 200 or more home runs? And we will tell you which one of those teams listed has a chance to break this record this season when we have more sports later on. Monty and Kaylee. Thank you, Greg. Another comic book has found its way to Hollywood. Coming up, we'll preview the comic-turned-movie, Sin City. Also, some people think that living in rural America is too secluded. We'll talk with an anthropologist that lived in the middle of a jungle for five years. Need to plan an entire conference? Want to provide your employees with professional training and development? The Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota provides quality programs and services for career enhancement. Whether you want to attend educator workshops or need a certificate for your profession, the Division of Continuing Education can help you achieve success. Contact the Division of Continuing Education today and let us meet your professional needs. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer? Well, I'm a really good people person. I really love working with people. I'm very, very motivated. I'm a great people person. I am really motivated. Offer an employer something more. At the University of North Dakota Career Services Center, we can help you get the competitive edge you need. Stop in or check us out. UND Career Services, empowering students to realize their dreams. Did I mention I'm great with people? The University of North Dakota College of Business and Public Administration offers real degrees for real people. Our nationally recognized faculty can help you earn a master's degree in business through evening classes. Taking these evening classes were very convenient for me and that's how I was able to complete the program. We offer degrees for people who work, raise families and lead busy lives. The UND College of Business and Public Administration, real degrees for real people. Become a leader in healthcare with a graduate degree from the University of North Dakota. The Graduate School at UND offers degree programs and advanced practice certificate programs in the allied health professions and nursing. Our faculty give you the individual attention you need to help you attain your career goals. Distance programs for practicing professionals allow you to pursue graduate studies without interrupting your career. Contact the UND Graduate School today. The School of Engineering and Mines at UND has a long history of preparing students for successful careers. Through small classes and faculty involvement, students have unique opportunities to gain hands-on experience. Here students launch a weather balloon to test a remote imaging device destined for Earth orbit. Students can also become involved in wind energy and fuel cell projects, design, build and race a Formula One car, or even develop a camera that will generate agricultural images from the International Space Station. Find out for yourself how you can get involved at UND School of Engineering and Mines. You're watching Studio One, twice named the best college television show in the nation by the National Association of College Broadcasters. Saving a life can be a rewarding experience to say the least. Saving a forest and an entire species of monkey is a whole other situation. Lisa Picciulli spent five years in a Sumatran forest studying a particular kind of monkey. She's here to share her experiences with us. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Um, well, how did you first start, first get interested in working with primates? Well, as an undergraduate, I studied psychology, so I was mostly interested in helping people. Um, I wanted to become a clinical psychologist, and after a while, when I saw how difficult that was, um, my professors got me more interested in animal behavior. From there, I did research on mice and dolphins, and one of the dolphin projects was on dolphin language studies, and I had always heard of ape language studies, so I did that for a while, 
and then I became interested in primates in general and in particular their conservation status in the wild. Okay, well you studied monkeys while you were working for your graduate degree. What kind of monkeys did you study? Actually, I studied uh, the Simacobo monkey, and the reason I chose them is because I was interested in why they had such a variable social organization. So, for example, gorillas live in one male, multi-female groups, so we call them harem groups, and so do some human groups, and we also have humans as well as non-human primates that live in monogamous groups. And for me, I was interested in the Simacobo monkey because it was reported to be in part of their range in monogamous groups and in other parts in some larger groups, and I wanted to know why. Well, the Simacobo monkey is considered your species of monkey. How did they get that title? Well, um, scientifically and professionally, it doesn't sound good if I call them my monkey or other people do, but I think the reason uh, people call them my species is because if you do an internet search, I'm told if you Google it, um, apparently my name comes up or my photo or something. And the reason for that is because I'm the only person to habituate them, which means get them used to studying, um, people studying them and actually follow them around and I've written about them. So that's why people call them my species. Okay. Well, when you left Indonesia to report your findings in the U.S., um, loggers moved into the area you were studying. Why did you feel the need to go back? Well, um, basically at the time, although I was in the States and I had more than enough data for my, my doctoral dissertation, I really felt still very connected. I'd been there for about a year at that point. And in some way, I felt that I was either the only person who knew about the logging and or cared to do something about it. And so basically, I felt that I had to go back and do something or we would lose the forest and all the animals and plants that inhabit it. Okay. Well, you went back in to do the conservation project and you actually lived in the jungle for five years. And mm -hmm. we actually have some video that shows kind of what you did. Can you just tell us a little bit sure. about that? Sure. It looks like that I'm leaving the research house and going into the forest. I'm going down into a lower area. Um, I'm collecting data on the monkeys who are obviously above me in the trees. That's one of our males. He's moving up into a palm tree. And I think I'm trying to make sure if he's eating ripe or unripe palm fruits. And there he is going up a little higher. Now I'm going into the forest with one of the local people who was an expert monkey hunter. And unfortunately on this day, I remember it well, I had been away and I came back and found arrows in the forest. And these particular arrows are used to hunt monkeys. Uh, where I do my work, people do still eat monkey. So the guide is telling me how long ago those darts were used. Okay. Well, what was a typical day like for you when you were studying these monkeys? Well, it was pretty boring. Uh, we woke up at about 5, 5.30 in the morning. I had a bowl of water to wash my face and a cup of boiled and cooled water to brush my teeth with. I ate some mushy rice with uh, lots of sugar in it. About 6 a.m. at sunrise, we went into the forest and we found the monkeys and stayed with them all day till 6 p.m. About 6 p.m., because it's getting dark again, we came home, so um, I would bathe in a stream before it was too dark and the snakes came out, then eat dinner and uh, have about a half hour before we'd have to go to sleep and start all over again the next day. Okay. Well, a lot of people have written things about you in National Geographic and the Discovery Channel actually have done some stories on you, and you were considered or you're called the Blue Planet Hero. You were nominated <laughs> for that by Discovery Channel. What does this mean? Well, I left my cape in the green room. I would have brought it out had I known you're going to ask. Actually, it's kind of a silly title and professionally it doesn't sound great, but it's the kind of thing your family likes to hear. Um, I just was very lucky. I was in the forest. People heard about me and my work. A videographer came out. He filmed me and the monkeys and then sometime the next year I heard he entered it in a contest, sent it to National Geographic. They happen to be having a contest, and they were looking for 12 people who have had a significant positive impact globally. And I heard I was in the running, then I was one of the 12 chosen, then they were choosing one out of the 12, and I don't know how they chose me, and I am the Blue Planet hero now, so. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. You've had a very interesting experience throughout your life. What are you doing these days? Well, I'm in exciting Grand Forks, North Dakota, and seriously, I love it here. I'm actually teaching in the anthropology department. Um, and I teach a bunch of intro courses, some upper level, where we actually do learn about primates. And uh, we would like you to actually take one of the primate courses with us. Thank you. That's a very interesting story. Thanks so much for coming on the show and sharing all your experiences mm. with us. Well, thank you for having me. Children often name astronauts as something they would like to be when they are older. We'll speak with someone who is working on a project with NASA. Also, our next story features someone who works with oil, three hands, and many different faces. Stay with us to watch a special type of repair work.
Earn a degree in engineering while you continue to work. The University of North Dakota's Distance Engineering Degree Program offers the only ABET accredited undergraduate degree program at a distance. Instructors and classes are delivered to you through online lectures and condensed on-campus laboratories. It's convenient, it's flexible, and it's a quality education. UND Continuing Education and the School of Engineering and Mines, teaming up to bring quality education to your door. Need to plan an entire conference? Want to provide your employees with professional training and development? The Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota provides quality programs and services for career enhancement. Whether you want to attend educator workshops or need a certificate for your profession, the Division of Continuing Education can help you achieve success. Contact the Division of Continuing Education today and let us meet your professional needs. Bruce Willis and Jessica Alba are among the many stars in the upcoming film, Sin City. In Frank Miller's directorial debut, he brings the characters from his comic book onto the screen. Sin City is a motion picture that brings dark and edgy characters to life. Taken right from the comic book page, the characters of Sin City seek revenge, salvation and sometimes both. The correct, corrupt characters living in an unforgiving city are brought to life by a star-filled cast and special effects. We follow the books uh, panel for panel sometimes, uh, just about all the dialogue and voiceover uh, that, that, uh, that are in uh, each book, um, I think is in the film. The majority of the film was shot in front of a green screen and special effects were added later. The movie's three directors worked hard to make sure the movie was exactly like the comic book tales. Now it's time to take a look at the events happening in your area. People often keep themselves busy with hobbies. We'll spend a day in the life of a man who literally works around the clock. This tiny room in David Pilon's home is devoted solely to restarting time. Dave makes his living as a packaging operator at the Simplot factory by day. But when the wheels stop turning at work, his evening hobby is what keeps him ticking. Well, I'll tear apart for a while if I can't figure it out right now. After repairing clocks for more than 20 years, Dave has worked on a lot of different pieces. Oh, mantles, walls, anniversaries, cuckoos, grandfathers, grandmothers, even worked on some granddaughters, which are very few. Uh, pretty much anything went mechanical. He discovered he had a knack for tinkering, and he's been at it ever since. Dave has made countless repairs. Well, um, some of them are bushings, a lot of them need cleaning, some just need oiling and adjustments. Whether they're dirty, broken, or haven't ticked for years, Dave has seen it all. But once in a while, time stands still for stranger reasons. I think some people said their clock stopped uh, when their husband died in the funeral, at the time of the funeral. The clock all of a sudden just stopped right there. Whatever the problem, Dave just enjoys working on his clocks whenever he can. I'd say Late morning, I like sitting outside in the sun. I'll work on them outside. I'll go sitting outside and in the summer, just like being out there and listening to the birds and work on the blocks. 
So the next time your clock goes cuckoo, you'll know exactly who to call. With photographer Amber Gray, I'm Danielle Webster reporting for Studio One. Dave's five-year-old son Ryan loves to help his dad work on his clocks. One of the, his duties includes oiling clock movements. Coming up, police officers have a variety of crime-fighting tools. In our Spotlight segment, we'll show you a police tool that can detect the faint scent of drugs. That story plus news, sports and weather in the next half hour of Studio One. George Bull and his partners found value in farina, the whitest part of wheat, and created cream of wheat. Patrick Haggerty founded Texas Instruments and helped it become one of the nation's high-tech giants. Raymond Rood is responsible for the modern diving board. His diving boards have been used in every Olympic competition since 1960. Chris Moen and Marlene Schott launched their food company through the UND Entrepreneurship Program. Will yours be next? The University of North Dakota Alumni Association and Foundation, together with thousands of alumni and friends, are making a difference at UND. Thanks to generous private support, many students have experienced the rich history, tradition, and spirit of the University of North Dakota. UND alumni and friends understand the importance of education and are proud to be part of UND's growth and success. Learn how your gift to the UND Foundation can benefit you and your university. You can make a difference. Earn a degree in engineering while you continue to work. The University of North Dakota's Distance Engineering Degree Program offers the only ABET accredited undergraduate degree program at a distance. Instructors and classes are delivered to you through online lectures and condensed on-campus laboratories. It's convenient, it's flexible, and it's a quality education. UND Continuing Education and the School of Engineering and Mines. Teaming up to bring quality education to your door. Tradition runs deep among American Indian people. One of those traditions is helping others. At the University of North Dakota, American Indian Student Services is dedicated to helping students succeed. Our support services include tutoring and financial aid assistance. We have more American Indian programs than any other university in the U.S., making UND a leader in Indian education. Be a part of our tradition. Call 1-800-CALL-UND. From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Welcome back to Studio One. Thank you for joining us today. Well, people use the internet for a lot of different things, to shop, to look up information, mm -hmm. and actually now they're using it to hunt. Okay. There's a new program out there that's um, been implemented and we're Gonna actually, we actually ask people what they think about whether this is ethical or unethical. Wow, so you can sit at a computer and hunt. And hunt from Real your living animals. room. Yep. Okay, well we'll find out what people think about that. Also coming up in the next 30 minutes on Studio One, many American students have no access to a music program. We'll tell you why many educators believe those kids are missing out on an important learning experience. Also, it would be very hard to hide drugs from this police officer. We'll introduce you to a crime-fighting team armed with a badge and a powerful nose. Also, there are swimsuits, business suits, and yes, even birthday suits. Coming up, we'll talk with someone who's helping to design a suit that is literally out of this world. But first, here's today's news with Megan Floggin. Thanks, Monty and Kaylee. The commission looking into U.S. intelligence failures says American spy agencies were dead wrong about Iraq's weapons capabilities. The panel presented its formal report to President Bush Thursday morning. The co-chairs of the commission appeared before reporters to answer questions about their findings. The report concluded that U.S. intelligence does not know much about weapons programs and threats from other nations. The report says pre-war judgments were wrong and intelligence was unable to collect accurate information. The Commission is recommending a complete change in the intelligence community. First Lady Laura Bush left Afghanistan Thursday. Her five-hour visit brought nearly $18 million in aid and the promise to build an American university. Bush, a former school teacher and librarian, met with students and teachers to highlight advances for women in that country. She also met with President Ahmed Karzai and U.S. troops serving in Afghanistan. From the morning commute to driving home, streetlights are often overlooked. But like most technologies, traffic lights are facing upgrades. 
Cities throughout the nation are switching from incandescent light bulbs to an energy and money saving alternative. Light emitting diodes or LED traffic lights are the same technology used to light computer screens. But today the technology is lighting up intersections. Reports show that the new signals are saving cities both energy LEDs and maintenance are costs. Anywhere between 80 and 90 percent more efficient, uh, use less energy than incandescent bulbs. Because of their design, LED traffic lights are brighter, making them easier to see. Traffic officials say that the new lighting system will make driving safer. For the first time in modern history, today's generation may live a shorter and less healthy life than their parents. According to the New England Journal of Medicine, about 30% of American children are overweight. Many health experts agree that within the next 50 years, the average American lifespan could be shortened by at least two to five years. Some health officials blame fast food and cuts in phi ed classes for the rise in childhood obesity, but some doctors have doubts that obesity will negate the effects of other medical advances. Math, science, and English are arguably some of the most important classes a student can take. But some educators and students say a different class provides knowledge that could be just as important. Students don't use calculators or test tubes in these classes. And notes are not what you study for the next test. From classical to jazz, Music class is a large part of a school's curriculum. Millions of students across the U.S., from elementary through high school, are involved in a choir or band class at their school. It's just fun. It's my own thing, I guess. Some people like sports. I like choir. And at conferences like this one, teachers and students emphasize the importance of keeping music education in schools. The arts, of which music is a big part of, needs to be in our curriculum. The balance of sports, music, academia, it's, it's so important, it's so critical to our society, to our young people. Music is involved throughout everything in the world. It just applies to your life in general. According to the No Child Left Behind Act, music is part of a school's core curriculum. Yet nearly 25% of U.S. students are without access to any type of music course. We need this side, we need this human side. It's just a great activity to be a part of. While access to these classes is dropping in some schools, many states do require students to take a music class. But the relationship between student and class isn't always harmonious at first. Choir director back in like seventh grade basically made me and I uh, just fell in love and just can't get away from it. And educators hope more schools will give students the opportunity to fall in love with a music course. Research by the National Association for Music Education shows that students involved in music classes score higher on standardized tests, have better spatial reasoning skills, and are less likely to use drugs or alcohol. And that's the news for now. Monty and Kaylee? Thanks, Megan. It's good to hear music every once in a while. It's true. And uh, I'm starting to hear music coming from the trees. Yeah, the birds are starting to sing, mm -hmm. signs of spring. Let's go over to Aaron Swanson at the weather studio and he'll tell us what's going on outside. Well, thanks, Monty and Kaylee. It is a fun time of the year. You get to see a lot of those uh, things come back to life. So, uh, and a good sign of what we've seen, actually, we've seen some snow and also some rain in towards the northwest. So that's usually a good sign that you start to see some signs of spring, at least. Uh, the spring in the higher elevations, uh, some snowmobilers got to get out and enjoy uh, the weather, so it was kind of nice for them. And they saw almost two to three feet in some areas, so it covered uh, almost everything. But there was a really uh, rare shot that was caught at the Space Needle in Seattle. Uh, it was struck by lightning, and they actually caught it on television. So quite the scene when you look at it. Uh, you can see actually when the lightning bolt struck pretty much twice, so you get that retractor beam kind of that goes on back up in towards the clouds. So it was pretty neat to see that for the first time, for you know one of the first few times that you get to see a lightning bolt actually strike something. So uh, this is the main area that was affected. Uh, it was parts of Washington and Oregon as well. So, but as we take a look, uh, it also spread in towards Montana, which needs it, and also in Idaho. Uh, but it didn't make it much farther than the Rockies there. So it was quite, uh, quite the storm though, otherwise in through the areas. Well, cell phones have become quite the necessity uh, for, especially for calling in severe weather and helps also detect uh, tornadoes and thunderstorms. So a link between cell phones and weather have a, is very strong. Technology is constantly changing and always making our lives a little easier. Cell phones have been a major part of this technology boom. 
The small phones have made getting the latest news, sports scores, and even the weather a lot easier. People are really into getting uh, the web-based phones. It's kind of a uh, cuts down and makes your day a little more convenient. Newer cell phones can gain access to the internet. They can find weather sites that will give you all the information you will need to get yourself through the day. You can type in any zip code, you can see the current weather, you can get a seven day forecast, you can get a travel, the travel weather, what you can expect for the next you know, week if you're going on a trip or something. Yeah, for most of the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, in fact for most of you, there will be some glimpses of sunshine to be found on Tuesday. These phones are not only making travel plans easier, they are also saving lives by alerting people of dangerous road conditions and when severe weather is in their area. Cell phone companies say a new TV feature is the next step in the cell phone industry. Well, 95% of the United States is actually covered by cell phones uh, towers, so there's a very good chance that you'll be within range to call in a storm or also just to get the travel weather for yourself. So here again is a recap of our Studio One Weather IQ question. What was the sunniest city in the United States? And actually your answer is Yuma, Arizona, where they see about 80% of the year They'll have sunshine, so only 20% that you're not going to. So good chance of getting a suntan down there. So Monty and Kaylee. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Well, Yuma seems to be the place to be then. <laughs> I guess. You wouldn't want to go down there with a, with a winter white skin. No, yeah. probably not. You probably end up getting burnt very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go to sports again with Greg Anchors. Thanks, Monty and Kaylee. It's been a roller coaster season for the University of North Dakota men's hockey team, but one unfortunate downturn has the team riding high just in time for a championship run. The University of North Dakota men's hockey team has hit the stride they've been waiting for all season. The team has now won seven of its last eight heading into the NCAA Frozen Four, but a tragic event during the conference tournament may be fueling them more than they realize. The puck was coming around the boards and we had to delay penalties so very soon as I was going to touch it, the whistle was going to blow anyways. And when I got to the puck, I touched it, whistle blew, and then Denver's Jeff Pockridge came and hit me from behind. And I just kind of went in the boards awkwardly. The hit on Robbie was so severe that he immediately began to feel tingling in his fingers and toes and he would need to be removed from the ice on a stretcher. Following, he had surgery to remove a vertebrae in his lower neck. But it's the loss of this prominent player that may have given the team the inspiration it needed all along. Extremely popular guy in the locker room, on the bench, and, and very important to us on the ice. Uh, but certainly right now I know the guys are, are going to play a little bit extra hard for him. When you see a teammate go down like that, you definitely want to play for him, make sure everything's okay. And, uh, you know, in a sense, you know, have, have a good time for him since he's not there and make sure he enjoys it as well. While the team has begun its final preparation for their charge towards a title, Robbie says it's difficult not to play, but he knows what he has to do. Uh, my role is just kind of cheer the team on and just kind of give them a little inspiration if I can and hopefully they keep it going. There may be thousands of fans cheering for UND at the Frozen Four this year, but it's the voice cheering from the bench that may be the most important. ND Fighting Sioux open up the NCAA Frozen Four against their rival, the Minnesota Golden Gophers in Columbus, Ohio. And now the answer to this week's Studio One Sports Trivia question. Yankees aside, what other team has had five consecutive seasons with 200 or more home runs? And the answer is the Chicago White Sox. It's a current streak. They uh, can break it this season if they can hit more than 200 homers, and uh, that would be quite a feat for their franchise. And that's the sports. Monty and Kaylee. Thanks, Greg. People often have more free time on their hands after they retire. One group is occupying time by picking up musical instruments, whether they have played before or not. Also, teamwork is essential between police partners. We'll show you how a special team works to find hidden illegal drugs. Wall Street has come to the prairie through the A. Kirk Lannerman Investment Center at the University of North Dakota. This state-of-the-art facility in the College of Business and Public Administration provides hands-on experience in the world of modern finance. Students learn how financial markets react with lightning quickness to world events. They use cutting-edge technology and real-time data from more than 200 financial markets around the world. The Lannerman Investment Center provides the tools to make a career out of an education. There are many things to be found at the University of North Dakota School of Law. You will find a place with small class settings, an affordable place that offers student interaction with both the state and federal court systems. You will find a school that has averaged over 90% placement for its graduates the past five years. But most importantly, 
you will find the skills and experience you'll need throughout your legal career. Find your future at the University of North Dakota School of Law. This can happen. Excuse me, can I get a ride? What? My car broke down. Can I get a ride? No, I can't help you. Look, it's just a ride. No, step back. Get in the car! No! <laughs> Women can defend themselves. To learn more about Impact U or to enroll in a class, call the UND Women's Center. Advance your career with a graduate business degree from the University of North Dakota. The Graduate School at UND offers a variety of master's degrees that can help you stand out in the competitive business world. Our programs accommodate full-time students as well as working professionals. Our state-of-the-art facilities, dedicated faculty, and entrepreneurial training position graduates for careers as business leaders. Make your move towards a business leadership position. Contact the UND Graduate School today. You're watching Studio One, your source for news, weather, sports, and entertainment. Adventurous seniors now have a chance to try something new. Throughout the U.S. and Canada, musical bands are helping to keep older adults young. Seniors often find reasons to gather. Between sips of coffee and bites of cake, important issues can be resolved and decisions made. One group gets together simply to play. A lot of people are living way past the time they retire, and so they, they're looking for something to do. A one, a two, a one, a go. They want something that's challenging and fun, and that's what we have here. Meet the Second Wind Band. This group is for those over 50 who would like to play a musical instrument. Barbara Spicer is playing the same sax she played almost 50 years ago. But she's not the only one to blow notes through this horn. My daughter has played my horn, my grandson has played my horn, and my two nieces have played my horn. Although the music can be difficult, the challenge is welcomed. I yell at them a lot and they, they seem to like that. And they don't want me to take breaks. Despite the hard work ethic, the band hasn't turned professional quite yet. There's no charge for concerts. I don't get paid for that either, but that's the, that's the way it is. I don't care. I mean, we're having fun, and I'm having fun, and, and uh, they like coming, and so I do too. When it's all seniors, and we have our little lunch break, which is quite important to us, into the conversation, and it's just lots of fun. Learn new music, see new friends. To these seniors, wrong notes, new skills, and lunch create a perfect harmony. I'm Amanda Nelson, reporting for Studio One. The Second Wind Band accept mem accepts members of any skill level. To find a New Horizons band in your area, visit newhorizonsband.com on the internet. People are now capable of hunting animals without leaving the comfort of their home. A Texas entrepreneur has created a website that allows its users to hunt online. The users get the choice of what animal they wish to hunt. We wanted to know your thoughts about this new hunting technique. If it's actually used on a target, it's actually a way to get people who's, who are unable to get out there. It's very, I don't know. It gives them the opportunity. I can understand the purpose of it and I think it would be beneficial or be entertaining for in, as a virtual thing, but I think it's slightly dangerous to use the robotics. Well, I just don't see where the thrill of the hunt would be there and what the purpose of it would be. I think it's crazy because when you really think about it, I mean, you're hunting on the computer and doesn't it really take the fun out of it? I think it takes the sport out of the game there. I mean, I'd rather shoot the deer, I mean, shoot any animal with my own gun. What's the sense in that? I mean, you know, part of hunting is being outside like we are right now. It's not really for the sport of it, it's just to kill things. Personally, that's my belief. I just think it's no different than getting out there and doing it yourself. It just makes people, you know, it gives them a chance to be lazy. To become an officer of the law, one must go through a series of courses and tests. The demanding training sessions are still required even for those competing on four legs. Did you? Huh? Good boy. <gasps> Bosco and Thunder enjoy walks and playing fetch. That is, when they're off duty. 
These canines are among an elite group of dogs chosen and trained to work with police officers. The hounds go through countless hours of training to make the force. Find it, Mama. Find it. See? Huh? Good boy. Good boy. Now, so what he's doing right here is he's showing me that he's actually smelling something that's underneath here someplace. So the dogs are even trained to ignore their stomach. He starts sniffing high up on the stove. There's a, a big roast that they've just taken out of the oven. And he jumps up on the stove and sniffs a little bit to the right and found some cocaine right there. Uh, just totally disregarded the food. Both dog and deputy train together. This way, the canine is taught to obey commands given only by a specific officer. Bosco is very protective of his owner and vehicle. Whenever anyone unfamiliar to the dog comes up to the vehicle, reactions such as this may occur. <laughs> And if that's not impressive enough, the animals are also bilingual. In German, uh, Giblaut means, <laughs> means speak. So the dog, will, the dog will speak, as you can see. Funds provided to buy and train the canine unit come mainly from private donations. The dog's value right now, because of their street experience, is well over in excess of $10,000 each. Because Bosco and Thunder are not trained to bite, it's easy for them to go from chasing criminals to chasing balls. This is what he does all his drug work for. Love, affection, and get to play a little ball with them. These four-legged officers are ready for action 24 hours a day. The teams are ready to venture through blizzards, 100 degree heat, or any other obstacle the crew may encounter. At first glance, these animals may seem like an ordinary house pet. You want more napkins? Huh? You want more napkins? Oh, I'm going to need more. Okay. However, a closer look reveals an extraordinary drug sniffing tool that can't be replaced with technology. And that's Bosco the Wonder Dog. <laughs> Keep loud. Reporting for Studio One, I'm Virginia Sticka. The deputies both say they plan to adopt their companions when the dogs retire from the force. Coming up, the red planet Mars is the fourth from the sun and has no human life. Next, we'll speak with someone who's trying to learn more about Mars by designing a spacesuit for this unique planet. No matter what your schedule, no matter when you work, no matter what job you have now, this is your opportunity to accomplish your goals. Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota can work around your busy schedule. Bachelor and Master's degrees are earned through convenient, flexible, and high quality classes. Complete degrees are available online through correspondence study and on weekends and evenings. Earn a degree on your terms with Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota. The College of Business and Public Administration at the University of North Dakota is proud to announce the Page Family Marketing Center. A gift from alumni Greg and Cindy Page, this center promises real-world experiences as students begin careers in marketing. The center includes a specially designed conference room for focus group research. An adjacent lab offers real-time access to software and data for marketing decisions. The Page Family Marketing Center, your next step in marketing. The School of Engineering and Mines at UND has a long history of preparing students for successful careers. Through small classes and faculty involvement, students have unique opportunities to gain hands-on experience. Here students launch a weather balloon to test a remote imaging device destined for Earth orbit. Students can also become involved in wind energy and fuel cell projects, design, build and race a Formula One car, or even develop a camera that will generate agricultural images from the International Space Station. Find out for yourself how you can get involved at UND School of Engineering and Mines. 
The UND College of Business and Public Administration is reaching out to rural America. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is working to connect North Dakota veterans with important information. North Dakota veterans can use the internet to access employment and business resources, health and benefits they deserve, housing information, and much more. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is funded in part by the North Dakota Congressional Delegation. North Dakota veterans and their families can get connected by visiting go.ndgrow.com. It is common to feel patriotic when watching Neil Armstrong first walk on the moon, but few people might think about who designed the suit that he was wearing. The North Dakota Space Consortium was awarded a grant to design a planetary suit for Mars. Project Manager Pablo De Leon is here to talk about the suit and its importance. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for And you me. brought somebody with you, Jenny Absolutely. Untener. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for coming as well. This is not a Mars spacesuit. What is, what is Jenny wearing today? Well, this is a training spacesuit that is used uh, for the space shuttle. Okay. This is for what is called orbital operations. So this is to be used outside the space station or outside the NASA space shuttle. Okay. But this is not what is called a planetary suit. Okay. That is very different than this one. Okay. Is it comfortable in there, Jenny, or what does it feel like? I think it'd feel a lot better if I were up in space. It's pretty <laughs> heavy and tight in the shoulders and a little warm. <laughs> okay. And what about this, the suit? How is it different from, uh, from uh, the suit that you're planning on creating? Well, basically in, uh, in space, in open space, you don't have many of the features that you need in a planetary surface, like for example in Mars. For example, in space you don't have to walk, and you don't need to have special uh, boots that will allow you to uh, walk or to do some special work of, uh, for example, geological work on Mars. And there are also s some concerns regarding the contamination of Martian dust, that uh, of course in space you don't have that problem. And also there is a weight issue. Uh, in uh, open space, it doesn't matter how, how much the, the suit uh, weights, but uh, in, uh, in the surface of Mars, for example, is, uh, is a concern. So we have to design a suit that is going to be very lightweight, so uh, the astronaut will be able to work for many hours without uh, being tired. Okay. Now, you were awarded a grant. I had mentioned that. And tell us about that grant and how you, how you came about that. Well, actually, the the um, grant was awarded to the to the North Dakota Space Grant Consortium, and several months ago, we in the Department of Space Studies, we we plan to present this uh, grant. So I, I mentioned to the to the chair of the of the Space Studies Department, Dr. De Silva, if uh, if what he thought about this idea of design a planetary spacesuit for NASA. He said, "Great, let's let's try." It. And uh, so we were awarded for this grant two months ago, and we're very happy for, for this. Yeah, well, congratulations Thank on you. that. And Jenny, you're much more than a suit model. <laughs> well, what is your role with this project? Um, I'm one of the two graduate students who are going to be pretty much hands-on with the project. We're going to be working on putting it together and also uh, looking on the management side of it, dealing with working with the other schools that are involved and the other companies mm -hmm. are going to be helping out. Okay. Now, you mentioned other schools. Pablo, is, is the University of North Dakota the only school working on this? Or? No. No. Actually, this is a, a, a program for all the state. So all the two years and four years uh, colleges in North Dakota are invited to take part in this project. Okay. How does NASA get involved? What, what's their role? Well, actually, they uh, are. Uh, this program is called the Workforce Development Program. What they are trying to do is to train young uh, professionals in the area of particularly the uh, human spaceflight. And uh, this is something that we can do here in North Dakota because you don't need special operations, special facilities, like for example for launch vehicles. This is something that we can do here in North Dakota with the facilities that we have available. So we are trying to, uh, uh, to, to do this first project as a, as a part of a long-term project in human spaceflight to create a center of excellence and a laboratory of human spaceflight here uh, in North Dakota. Okay. Now, what are s you had mentioned some of the things you're going to be thinking about when creating the suit. What are some of the other factors you'll be concentrating on? I know mobility are probably one of the things. Yes, yes. Actually, mobility is one of the most important because you have to be able to um, do geological work or, for example, to, to build an habitat on Mars. Uh, a, a, a trip to Mars will take two years. So you don't have the opportunity to come back to Earth to repair the suit or, 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 or to service the suit. So you have to design a suit that will, where, where the astronauts will be able to repair it or to maintain it on Mars or during the trip. Okay. Jenny, uh, are you, is it that suit you're wearing fairly 
mobile or easy to walk around? Well, it's a lot more mobile now than if it was actually pressurized. But mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. the Mars suit, how much different will that be? Or do you even know that at this point? Well, you have to be a lot uh, more uh, lighter. Uh, li lighter than this one, and also will have more, uh, more mobility features. And uh, it, uh, the temperatures on Mars are um, very, very cold. Mm. So we have to design a suit that during the winter in Mars will be able to, to keep the astronaut uh, at, uh, at a good temperature. Okay. Once you get this suit together, how are you going to test it? Well, we are going to do some testing uh, here with the facilities of the School of Aerospace. And uh, also we'll be doing some testing in uh, the west side of North Dakota. And we'll have uh, plenty of help from uh, NASA, the Johnson Space Center, and, and uh, the, the, the Hamilton, which is uh, Hamilton Sandstone, is the, is the major contractor of the NASA space shuttle suit. So they will be helping us through this uh, process. Well, after you go through all this trouble of creating this, do you think it'll make its way to Mars? Well, we'll try. This, uh, you know, this, this suit can be uh, uh, one step to the exploration of, of the Red Planet. But of course, it will take time, and, and, and we want to be involved in this particular field. All right. Well, thank you very much for both of you for coming Thank you very today. much. Very thank interesting. You. Good luck on making the suit. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. You're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota. We'll be back right after this. Tradition runs deep among American Indian people. One of those traditions is helping others. At the University of North Dakota, American Indian Student Services is dedicated to helping students succeed. Our support services include tutoring and financial aid assistance. We have more American Indian programs than any other university in the U.S., making UND a leader in Indian education. Be a part of our tradition. Call 1-800-CALL-UND. The Graduate School at the University of North Dakota is the premier graduate school of the Northern Great Plains, offering advanced degrees in more than 50 fields of study. Our innovative and flexible programs give full-time students, as well as working professionals, the opportunity to study under the guidance of nationally and internationally recognized faculty. Advance your career with a master's or doctoral degree from the Graduate School at the University of North Dakota. When you graduate from college, what will you be able to offer an employer? Well, I love working with people. I'm a people person. I consider myself to be highly motivated. I'm a real self-starter. Offer an employer something more. At the University of North Dakota Career Services Center, we can help you get the competitive edge you need. Stop in or check us out. UND Career Services, empowering students to realize their dreams. I can offer you much more than just good people skills. You're hired. No matter what your schedule, no matter when you work, no matter what job you have now, this is your opportunity to accomplish your goals. Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota can work around your busy schedule. Bachelor and Master's degrees are earned through convenient, flexible, and high-quality classes. Complete degrees are available online through correspondence study and on weekends and evenings. Earn a degree on your terms with Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota. This can happen. Excuse me, can I get a ride? What? My car broke down. Can I get a ride? No, I can't help you. Look, it's just a ride. No, step back. Get in the car! No! <laughs> Women can defend themselves. To learn more about Impact U or to enroll in a class, call the UND Women's Center. Tune in next week on Studio One. Cell phones are everywhere. We'll take a look at the new and wild accessories targeted for cell phone users. Plus, we'll have other news and entertainment stories for you. We're going to leave you now with pictures of a fire station, courtesy of photographer Patrick Wynn. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great week.